All right, we'll go ahead and get started. So I just want to welcome everyone here uh, and thank you for joining us today for our third uh, webinar in our uh, front-loading CFD uh, webinar series uh, from Maya HTT. Uh, my name is David Stevens and uh, we'll be looking today um, at uh, front-loading CFD for HVAC simulation. Um, your presenter today uh, will be Mohamed Charjoui. Um, I'm a technical pre-sales engineer and, and Mohammed is uh, also uh, in technical pre-sales as well. Um, before we jump into it, just a quick little bit about Maya HTT. So uh, at Maya HTT, we help organizations with their digital transformation journey. We are a 250 strong company, highly technical staff, 75% of Mayans are scientists and engineers with hands-on experience in nearly every industry. We have an interesting relationship with Siemens, where we're a value-added reseller, and OEM Siemens has recognized us as their top North American partner in 2021. We're not just a consulting and system integrator, we also have developed software with over 30 modules authored for Siemens, used by millions worldwide. In terms of the solutions we provide, obviously simulation is where Maya grew up, but over the years we've expanded to nearly every other domain within the engineering digital space. Whether an organization is looking to better design, simulate, manufacture, or organize operations, PLM tools, deployment of PLM tools, namely Team Center as well as AI and IoT, Maya's HTT, Maya HTT's combined engineering software development and AI expertise uniquely positions us to move you from concept to completion and beyond. Um, so today uh, we'll be looking at in the Sim Center portfolio uh, for Siemens. And uh, as I you mentioned earlier, Maya is a reseller of Siemens tools. And today, yes, we'll be focusing on the simulation portfolio, which is SimCenter. And SimCenter is the platform that allows our customers to accomplish multi-physics simulation in a cost-efficient way. So now we'll go ahead and start having a look at the tool. And this is just a little bit more of an overview here on this slide um, regarding the other uh, portions of the uh, simulation portfolio in SimCenter. Today, certainly we'll be looking at thermal flow, um, but we also have all of, uh, a very comprehensive portfolio um, of simulation, including structures, dynamics, durability, additive manufacturing, which is relatively new um, in terms of simulation, electromagnetics, materials, safety, and motion and acoustics. So before we get started and jump into the content, we'll just go ahead and go into our first poll. We'll launch uh, five polls today to, to learn a little bit more about maybe how we can help you in your simulation journey. And our first poll is up, so please uh, feel free to uh, um, uh, weigh in on our poll. And we'll keep this up for about another 15 seconds or so. So far, it's looking like a fair amount of our participants today use CFD um, in about almost all phases of their design, which is that is fantastic to hear. All right. And that continues to be the case. You see here we have about 56% of our participants who voted today um, use CFD during all phases of their design. Um, we're very happy to hear that. Uh, today we'll be talking about front-loading CFD simulation, which is about using CFD early in the design phase to uh, reduce costs. So I'll now go ahead and turn it over to Mohammed. Mohammed, you're still on mute. Thank you, David. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. I think, uh, am I unmuted? Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I suppose that, yeah, I'm on right now. All right, so this is the third session on a series, uh, on a series of webinar sessions that we had on uh, Flow EFD. So uh, the first two sessions were on IGBD cooling and uh, uh, electronics cooling of a PCB analysis. This session we're focusing on 
how CFD tools, particularly Flow EFD, uh, can be applied to a different application uh, uh, in the HVAC systems uh, to optimize building designs. There's going to be also another session uh, which will be on uh, the battery packs, so the as it relates to electric uh, electric vehicles. So uh, just uh, here, if you want to access to those sessions, feel free to take your phone and scan the QR codes that you see on the screen. Uh, the first three uh, sessions, there is a video recording of the previous webinars. And the third session, I think there is a registration, uh, sorry, the fourth session, uh, there's a registration link for it that you can uh, scan to attend. So moving on uh, to building simulations, basically, talk about the opportunities and challenges for HVAC optimization. So let's begin by looking at uh, some topics or categories as, uh, as they relate to understanding and improving your HVAC system. So we'll start by a couple of anecdotes on the economic impacts related to HVAC. So take a system that uses fans uh, to drive flow. And if you can cut the volumetric flow rate requirement of this system in half, so meaning that the fan would only need to supply half of the flow rate, you could reduce the electrical energy consumption of that fan by, by approximately 88%. So it would only require one eighth of the original energy to drive the fan. So similarly, in a heating application, reducing the air temperature requirements of the space by one degree Celsius can save like 6% in heating energy. Now, uh, these are just a couple of examples that they're based uh, sort of based on rules of thumbs, but uh, know that there's uh, clearly an economic motivation to improve uh, performance of HVAC systems. Now, uh, let's look at another role of the HVAC systems, which is to ensure performance and reliability of the re relevant equipment that it relates to. So. Uh, Let's take, for example, a data center. So obviously the electronic equipment in the data center needs to be kept within a certain temperature range to operate reliably and, and not fail. So that's another area where reliability and, and, and performance of the HVAC system is very much relevant. Now, if you move to comfort, for instance, uh, obviously this is one of the key parameters that you have an HVAC system to begin with um, uh, to provide comforts for the inhabitants in a space. So certainly residential and commercial spaces. Uh, one of the deciding factors that people would judge the space they're in is related to the comfort that they feel in that space. And that relates to the HVAC performance. Similarly, in the transportation side, your car, for instance, uh, I mean, uh, the, the comfort that you feel in, in that vehicle is very much determined by its air conditioning, it's, um, and, and that all relates uh, to, to HVAC performance. On the health and safety side, you know, uh, there's impact related to HVAC applications like clean rooms or operating rooms in hospitals, where you need to like manage contaminants to ensure a sterile space. And these are all directly relevant uh, to, to the performance of HVAC systems. And, this lets us to introduce some topics and some motivations for looking to understand, simulate, and uh, optimize uh, the, the HVAC systems, as I mentioned. Now, if we then move uh, just more generally and look at uh, you know, the hurdles and challenges of product design and manufacturing, obviously it would all come down to the fact that we want the products to be delivered faster, we want it to be better, we want it to be cheaper. And really, in terms of the top hurdles, the, the main bottleneck in the product design is uh, this idea that uh, uh, problems and errors are often found too late. So, and for this, oftentimes you need to make a lot of design changes. And this all leads to a very time consuming and inefficient loop of trial and error. So clearly there is a, this issue overall in the design process is, is being able to get the earlier feedback and, and uh, uh, to, uh, to that, you really need to analyze product behavior earlier. And this is going to be really through, through the simulation. So the earlier you know in the process that it's inefficient and time consuming to rely on physical testing or other means that, that don't fully capture the problem well enough. So you get it to, to the point where relying on simulation and, and, and being able to move it early in the process is, is advantageous and, and, and desirable. So uh, that move and that, that notion is, is what we refer to front-loading. And uh, 
So let's go ahead and expand on that a little bit. Uh, let's look at a typical design cycle. So in any given design process, you know, uh, that is, uh, it is much easier to make changes earlier in the design stage and uh, preferably in the conceptual stage before having developed uh, like the prototypes, the manufacturing tools, or worse, having produced and delivered the products to customers. So consequently, any, uh, any defect identified later in the design cycle will be more difficult to solve. And uh, uh, so many engineering processes depending on prototypes to evaluate their designs. And, uh, but we know prototypes aren't always available early and, and defect def detected at this stage generates significant extra costs and delays. And, and moreover, given the current situation, uh, we've seen many engineering companies paral paralyzed uh, due to the dependency on physical testing of, of uh, prototypes. So the solution to this problem is self-evident. Uh, imagine we were able to make design decisions uh, not only from a visual and functional perspective, but based on the engineering goals. What if a designer can early in the in this conceptual phase make informed design decisions based on the design performance? And this is what front-loading, oh, sorry, uh, simulation is is all about. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, it is a concept to make simulation available early in the design cycle. So one way to do this is providing the designers with simulation tools to ensure they can meet engineering objectives. Now let's uh, launch this second poll and uh, maybe talk about, yeah, so. Uh, I was just gonna say, uh, so what is your greatest challenges you face uh, when performing a CFD analysis? Um, yeah. The questions are, uh, excuse me, answers are model geometry decomposition abstraction, meshing fluid, solid interfaces, and inflation layers, developing accurate boundary conditions, model convergence, solve time, and compute resources, uh, or post-processing. And we'll just give a, about 15 or 20 seconds uh, to let people weigh in on that. All right, looks like uh, most people have voted. Let's go ahead and close and share that. And uh, certainly one of the, you know, all of these issues are, are, are issues that, that anybody faces in running a CFD analysis. Um, but certainly it, it seems fairly, uh, the two big ones are certainly uh, the model decomposition and, and model convergence. And uh, I think what you'll see today, uh, importantly with, with Flow EFD is that uh, Flow EFD is is fantastic at reducing the burden to the of the user um, on every single one of these challenges. Um, and uh, if you pay attention today, you you should uh, hopefully kind of see that um, uh, with each of the features that are demonstrated. Uh, yes. So, uh, oops, I just moved ahead a little bit. Yeah. Uh, so as as we saw in the poll, so looks like like a fair amount of people have. Uh, like one of the problems is that this model geometry preparation and decomposition. So, uh, just wanted to introduce the uh, Flow EFD and how it it enables users to actually overcome those those uh, challenges that uh, that we mentioned in these polls. So, uh, before we jump into the workflow, let let me introduce our tool, Flow EFD. So, what is Flow EFD? It's a front loading multi CAD embedded general purpose CFD tool. Some say it's a designerable tool, which is true, but it can do a fair amount of analysis that many of the more comprehensive uh, CFD tools like uh, Star System Plus can do uh, by, its, by its own. So like uh, it's not just for designers. So as I've stated previously, front loading is the concept of performing your simulations earlier in the design cycle to maximize uh, the impact and catch issues before the late stage validation phase. So there are several features to differentiate Flow EFD from other tools on the market. And we're going to highlight some of its uh, key features and functionalities later in this presentation. So 
FlowEFT is a tool which can be used in a wide range of uh, flow and heat transfer problems. It, it's been specifically developed for non-CFD specialists to get fast and accurate results. And uh, the measure and solver have the unique proprietary technologies which facilitate the streamlined CAD embedded analysis approach of this product. And, and, and this all leads to a drastic reduction in barrier to entry in overall uh, CFD simulation time. This, Tool is available in five versions uh, to support your MCAT uh, workflow. And uh, today we'll be looking at the NX version in this demo, but the process is identical for other MCAT tools. So in terms of the applications and physics that can be supported and simulated, Fluid of it really covers the broad range of physics. Here you can see some of those. Uh, so for mixing fluids, refrigerants, heat exchangers, uh, ventilation, obviously, supersonics, all of that can be simulated. Uh, with this tool. And one thing that really impresses me is, is the ability to model non-Newtonian fluids. I mean, this is something related to my past experience. And for a software like this, I mean, uh, it, it is quite impressive to model uh, complex fluids like that. So as, as, uh, as I mentioned, so it's really not just for designers. It can do a fair, about, a fair amount of analysis by itself. So, <laughs> What is it about Flow EFT that makes it unique? And first and probably the most obvious when you initially see the software is just the, the way we work in CAD. So the CAD embeddedness, you know, the ease of use and pro, uh, productivity advantages that come from being able to work directly in the CAD model. And we're embedded in the major CAD systems, so NX, Solid Edge, Creo, Katia. And, and there's also a standalone version, which you can use to import geometries from other CAD tools to it. And the advantages of this beyond just being in the CAD interface is, you know, uh, the, the approach that we take with respect to the Floyd space recognition. So that is CFD, it's going to be Floyd region within airspace and then the, some, uh, some uh, solid regions that need to be modeled. So the way that is handled in Flow EFT is very easy and elegant. And the ability to work on the native CAD model that, that isn't the exporting out of CAD into and other packages. So you're working directly on a native CAD model with the inherited advantages of, of that being able to easily uh, to make changes to the model. So you set up your analysis, you know, uh, directly on the CAD model itself, applying inputs to the CAD model, and the results will be viewed in the CAD environment directly on your uh, native CAD model. And this, this all uh, leads to, like I say, easy ability to make changes and see the effects of that. So and, and so one one aspect of it besides uh, the native cat is that the assembly that you really haven't done much with with respect to preparation so what's what's classically required for analysis preparation so defeaturing simplifying creating a fluid volume and these things to get ready to do an analysis in cae tools generally so just being uh, able to give it that full assembly so uh, that leads to the next technology that is uh, really is required to support all that is, is the meshing approach. They can deal with these types of uh, complex models that haven't been simplified. So when it comes to CFD simulation, meshing is probably the most complex and time consuming part of our job. So, you know, a lot of your users um, aren't, uh, let's say, classic CFD analysts who specialize in this field. So we need some additional technology and a lot of it is sort of under the hood and, and less transparent to the user as opposed to this uh, kind of embeddedness aspect of it. So the meshing, it's, it's an approach that's easy that, and it doesn't have uh, a lot of requirements with respect to expertise from the user. Uh, I'm going to expand on the meshing uh, here a little bit more because uh, this is not something that we do in this demo today as, it, as the geometry is not that complex. But uh, if you want to go to the details of meshing, I highly recommend watching the previous webinars that we did on electronic scrolling. So it, it, when it comes to meshing, so it can really just chew up these complex assemblies with very little intervention from the user. Now, if you do become a more experienced user, and you want to invoke some meshing control, you can. It is um, available, certainly. So I don't really want to give you an impression that it's just like this black box approach. Uh, it is flexible. But but the real power of it is, is being able to just take an unsimplified CAD model and with very few inputs, get a, a robust mesh very quickly, which is a big time server and gets rid of a major bottlenecks in, in doing CFT generally. 
And the third act aspect of that sort of supports, um, like uh, that, like the third third aspect that supports all of this is is some of these underlying technologies. You know, the, the ability to generate a mesh like that, it's it's great. But to support that style of mesh, we need to have uh, some additional uh, smarts, if you will, uh, built into the solver. So it, it's it's built into the underlying math algorithm that the goes into the solution process. So we incorporate some uh, innovative modeling to handle things like uh, how the boundary layer is treated and areas where, let's say, uh, the mesh is coarse uh, relative to what you would classically need in CFD. And we have spe uh, specific technology for wall functions that help to model that, that, that viscous sublayer uh, without creating inflation layers, which makes this uh, solution extremely efficient while at the same time accurate. And uh, there's this ability to, to model thin walls and multiple areas of different solids within a single cell. So if you have lots of thin little structures and things like that, uh, you don't have to have uh, individual cells for each one. We also can model uh, thin channels using relatively small number of cells. And even though we're using this immersed type of mesh, uh, we're not doing major things uh, like to try to simplify and, and mess with the geometry. We're keeping the geometry. We do not need to simplify, which as I said, is a major time saver and it helps with the accuracy uh, as well. So that was Flow EFD in general. I uh, just wanted to uh, mention some specific um, capabilities of this tool when it comes to application areas for the HVAC system. So Moving into the application areas, I mean, there's obviously HVAC components, so heat exchangers, valves, pumps, and fans. Uh, simulation of, of these components would, will provide like crucial insights concerning like thermal distributions, like if you want to identify hotspot, things like that. Uh, these are all possible. Uh, there's applications uh, in air conditioning, so um, optimizations for different operating conditions, temperatures, like draft parameters, etc. And uh, there, there are a lot of applications of pollutant dispersion, so contaminant control as, as uh, we went through, so clean room conditions, uh, the local air quality index and, and things like that. For, for predicting comfort parameters, there are several features, so you can pro uh, predict draft rates, uh, like predict, uh, predicted uh, percent dissatisfied, tracer study, and all that, these are all possible within Flow EFD. And there's also a radiation tool set. So a building materials database that, that could be applied to model like radiation and sun load uh, and, uh, on the structures. So that was uh, kind of the application areas as it relates to HVAC. Uh, just here, uh, so David, if you can launch this third poll before we want to move into the demo. And yeah, that, then I will continue. Yeah. So our third poll is, does your engineering work involve buildings, HVAC systems, such as valves, fans, pumps, and or heat exchangers? And also, don't forget, uh, you certainly can ask questions in the chat um, that we can answer uh, as, as things move along or uh, address them in the Q&A session. I'm going to give it another 10 seconds. And it looks like uh, majority of folks, 61% uh, say yes, uh, well as 39% uh, say no. Um, but I think you'll find today that uh, even if you're not particularly looking at HVAC simulation today, you'll see how this workflow can probably uh, be applied to to one of your uh, your applications. Uh, yes. So thanks, David. Yeah, as David explained, so. The kind of workflow that you'll see today for the HVAC systems uh, is is pretty much similar. So it's basically this study, uh, the example that I want to show here today is looking at a duct system with an office space. So it's basically showing how you can use this software in a more automated way 
to start optimize something. So here's here's the roadmap for our demonstration today. And this workflow mirrors the actual steps starting from the embedded simulation in the parametric CAD model through the specification of the design tasks, uh, the, the setting up of the parametric study, including like a design exploration to the optimized result. And uh, as I mentioned, so this doctor system is a part of an HVAC system, which uh, it should ensure a certain uh, air supply at the corresponding outlets. Now, let's uh, go further into this uh, structure. So as you can see, we will be looking at the NX version in this demo, but the process is identical for other CAD, CAD tools. So this is an overview of a building with the ventilation system. And the component marked here is a duct, which is part of the system. And we will consider this more in detail now. And the component is open as a separate assembly and the functionality is shown here. So on, on the left side is the inlet and the, the duct has uh, 15 outlets as well. So which are equipped to, with these flaps and the design task is to optimize the outlet volume flow rate to, to a certain target value. And this is a first quick overview of, of the example as uh, that uh, we will discuss. So moving on is, uh, so I just wanted to touch on uh, the benefit of CAD embeddedness. So as I mentioned, it is natively embedded in the CAD system. So this means there's no need to transfer geometry from your CAD to a CFD tool. So all of the assembly and uh, part uh, parametric definitions are maintained. So modifications can be made easily. And this is especially helpful when it comes to things like if you want to look at like optimization of the geometry. So the Floyd region is automatically detected and this is also updated with the uh, geometrical changes. And the image you're seeing here is that the CAD parameter to modify the, the flaps angle. And let's, let's look at this in this doc example. And so again, uh, here we see some certain flow EFD embedded in the NX. And we also use uh, the NX ribbon bar here. And the boundary conditions are directly applied on the CAD components. So here are the inlet and the uh, outlets. So, and then inlet volume flow rate is defined and the uh, corresponding environment pressure openings. Now you're seeing here the callouts show, uh, show an overview of the boundary conditions. Now we zoom into a detailed area of the duct at the inlet and uh, and so as I mentioned, you can see the boundary conditions here and the 15 outlets uh, are equipped with these flaps. So to regulate and control the airflow, uh, actually volume for, for the outlets. So the opening positions of the flaps are defined by an angle constraints in the NX assembly and, and can be modified by, the, by these NX expressions. So here we can see an example of modifications. So we change this to 30 degrees and then we're going back to 10 degrees. So for all of them, uh, they're setting back uh, to initial 10 degrees positions for all flaps. And basically, uh, once we do that, so changing 70 degrees to 10 degrees, making it all uh, 10 degrees. And yeah, so basically applying the previous view in the model uh, view options, we can see the pre-calculated results uh, for this initial variant with a, a 10 degrees uh, opening position for all flaps. So the flow trajectories can be used to see how the flow moves through the fluid region. So here we see the pressure distribution for a cut plot with streamlines in, in, in detail for the, for the inlet area. So if we look at the, yeah, so yeah. So look, zooming in to the streamlines region, you can, so the effect of the flaps on the flow profile is, is clearly visible. You can look at things like uh, the, how the vortices are formed behind the flaps, how the streamlines develops in, into the flow domain. So uh, yeah, this is the kind of uh, post-processing that you get from this software. Set. And also uh, one thing I wanted to mention here as we look at the, uh, the geometry, is that uh, the numerical results for the individual outlets can be analyzed like by the gold plot summary. And the data can also be extracted in Excel and work format for uh, maximum flexibility. And you can see here, so for example, uh, for this, uh, 
how how these numerical results uh, uh, we, we can see like the volume flow rate for different outlets and, and how it can be exported. So that's uh, pretty much uh, for the CAD embeddedness that I wanted to touch on. So the benefits of having a CAD embedded approach are that there is no or like minimal geometry simplification as you saw necessary. So results can be like visualized directly on the CAD assembly as you're working with it, changing the geometry. So geometry changes are detected, the project is updated automatically on live and, and like these de design parameters are also available for further modifications if you want to look at that. So this tool is also easy to use uh, for existing users as it's just an extension of like the that familiar CAD tool that they're used to. So and moving on to the design task. So the design task here today is to achieve a specific required volume flow rate for the outlet. So the required volume flow rate uh, depends on the size and use of uh, the, the specific rooms for, uh, for, uh, for that uh, building. So this is realized by modifying the flap angle at, at constant inlet uh, volume flow. So uh, this is how we do this actually. So the surface goal volume flow rate where already defined for each outlet. And so user-defined engineering goals uh, can be specified to extract key performance data and will be used for the optimization later. And so the required volume flow rates at the various outlets uh, are shown here. And uh, so uh, here you can see on the, yeah, the required volume flow rates at the left of uh, uh, the tab here. And it is extremely difficult like to find a manual solution here by just successively like modifying the flat position one after the other, especially since these also influence each other. So the goal of this study is to optimize the flaps positions to achieve like the lowest deviation of the required volume flow for each outlet. And so the DV equation goals show the uh, like the deviation between the resulting value and the required value for each opening. So for example, as, as you saw here, uh, so the like the definition of one equation goal is shown here. So the target value for the deviation between like the flow rate goal and and uh, and, uh, and the and the flow uh, is uh, is so the target value is 200, 120 uh, cubic meters per hour, and it, it is basically optimizing it uh, to minimize the deviation between uh, the design goal and what it already is. So, so to recap what we just saw, so the analysis setup is, is performed in a fam familiar CAT system. So analysis boundary conditions are applied onto the assembly parts and features. And uh, the benefits of, of this step is that it's quick and intuitive to, to set up analysis for the design engineer. And uh, moving on to the parametric study. So traditionally, uh, I mean, uh, one of the trickiest and most time consuming aspects of CFD has been the geometry meshing stage. Uh, so the fluid and solid regions are discretized into grid cells, which is then passed to the solver for solution. It is normally this stage that is required to simplify the geometry for meshing or, or simulation compri uh, compromises made uh, for the sake of solution time. So complex CAD models are meshed with minimal user input using the automatically generated SimCenter full EFD smart cells. And this, this allows an automatic uh, run of parameter studies and optimizations using the already existing CAD parameters. And this is what we're seeing next year. So as we're setting the parametric study, so a new parametric study can be defined here for this optimization task. And, so remember the, the expressions shown earlier where the parameters that define the flaps uh, opening angle. So here uh, we would define them to be between zero degrees for a fully open condition to seven degrees, which is like a nearly closed condition. So as we can see, uh, so there are various options avail uh, available depending on what needs to be achieved. So the design of experiments and optimization uh, is a SimCenter for EFD native optimizer, which uses a brute force approach to seek an optimum. So the first tab in the input variables, we can, we can select simulation input. So 
NX expressions, assembly con constraints, or part family parameters. So let's choose the NX expressions, and uh, the parameters are added, and we select uh, like all 15 parameters here. So uh, we then need to give a min or max range for each of these inputs. So the values will be modified from uh, zero to 70 degrees uh, for all positions. Um, in the output variables, we select the goals uh, uh, to be optimized or uh, to be output later. So select um, uh, DV goals here, and which describe the deviation, as I mentioned, for, for each outlet. And a DV sum is, is the sum of all deviations. So the static pressure at the inlet will be shown to. So the overall outlet volume flow rate for like own control purpose if required as well. So as I mentioned, so it is trying to optimize, uh, sorry, uh, to minimize that DV sum value. So minimizing the deviation, uh, the sum of deviations from our design goal. So, and so let's look at the cut plot. So as a graphical preview. So finally, in this scenario tab, the number of experiments is defined. So select uh, uh, create, and here we, we select like 75, uh, to, uh, uh, automatically, like we are selecting it to create uh, 75 design points, then which are distributed like inside the range of for all parameters, and it is being automatically uh, automatically created here. So after specifying the available computers, like so, here we can do that. Uh, uh, so we can we can view like uh, the distributed design points, the kind of values we're changing for for each of them. And then we can uh, at the end define like the available computers, like uh, the number of cores, like uh, uh, the number of allowed simultaneous runs and things like that. So after this, so we can start the study and hit run, basically running this parametric, uh, parametric study. So to summarize uh, what we just saw, uh, uh, Flow EFD allows users to perform simulation variance intelligently to quickly identify the best operating point. So not leaving the CAD means that the geometrical inputs are available for variation based on the real geometry and the automated mesh uh, generation robust solving allow for a quick setup of design studies so, and, and optimizations. So uh, before we see the results, so just uh, so if David, could you uh, uh, launch the fourth poll here, so we can. Maybe sure thing. Yeah, thank you. So our uh, fourth poll should be a uh, third poll is: Would your engineering process benefit from a detailed thermal flow analysis of HVAC systems, HVAC systems early in the design phase? And we'll keep this up for about 15 or 20 seconds. And once again, please feel free to uh, drop any other questions uh, in the question box or the chat. Still getting a few more votes, so we'll just give it another few seconds. And so we also have a, a, a question here. Uh, how much time does it take to model, simulate, mesh, and obtain a full converged I'll expand my question box here a little bit. Full converged solution for ventilation system, air conditioning system of a commercial aircraft, uh, different flight configurations and conditions. Um, I think it all depends on, and I'll maybe uh, I'll let Mohammed jump in on this too. Um, certainly, you know, a lot of these. Uh, CFD times are, are very sim uh, minimal. Um, it all depends on the size and the fidelity that you want to hit. But for uh, a first pass solution, um, if you have your geometry all ready to go, um, I think something like this, you know, for a first pass could could be done in, um, you know, probably less than a day. 
um, or maybe a couple days, you know, for just a first pass solution, simply because you don't need to change much of the geometry. You can keep it very simple um, in order to get a first pass on, on ventilation systems like this. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all, Mohammed. Uh, yeah, so for the, sorry, uh, I just missed the question here. So I'm just trying to look at that. So there's also another question. So uh, uh, yes, we can provide the link to the recording of the second session. Uh, uh, I mean, the, the links will be shared with you at, at the end of this uh, presentation so uh, so let me let me actually do like the uh, and because being conscious of time here I will uh, do the uh, answer the second uh, first question uh, during the Q&A so let me move on with the parametric study here so uh, basically performing this parametric study uh, we will it, it, it allows the user to quantify the difference in a design change, and, and this has tangible benefits on, on product operation. So let's have a look at the results of the study now. Yes. So uh, the study was run automatically. We can scroll through the 75 design points. Uh, for each design point, uh, the applied angle of each flap and the results are listed here. So in addition, we can uh, like see uh, uh, the, the corresponding res response surface. So if you look at that, uh, so we, yeah, here's the response surface. So an overview of all response surfaces is shown and we can select uh, like individual prods. So here, for example, we see the goal uh, DV0725B, which displays the deviation at the outlet 25. So if this, um, so you can, you're looking at the Angle. Now, if this slider, which like defines the opening angle of, of another flap is changed, the, the influence on this particular parameter is dynamically displayed here. So you can see that it is being updated live. So the, result, the resulting response surfaces are also used to find an optimum solution based on uh, these uh, existing points. So we apply the weighing factor one for uh, the other parameter of, uh, of interest. And with the goal to minimize these, uh, so uh, here are the deviation of the outlets. So the resulting, uh, so when we add yeah, optimal design points, the, the, the resulting equation for the numerical solution uh, will be shown and, uh, and, and we click and add the optimal design points. So we added that, sorry, I think we are stopped, yeah. And uh, so the design point optimal one is created. And as a separate design point, the estimated results based on the response surface statistics are shown in gray. And we can uh, run the simulation uh, of, of this single point to obtain the exact calculated results. And once we hit run, this was uh, done. So we can, we can see the results for, for this point. So for comparison, you see how quick that was. I mean, that was actually live. So some of the deviations were reduced from uh, 1830 cubic meters per hour in this initial position to just 321 uh, cubic meters per hour. So uh, in the optimized flat positions, which would be hard to achieve with like ma manual adjustments. So the, the optimal design point with the corresponding parameters for the optimized uh, flat positions was also created in the CAD system. So let's look at uh, the final results of, of the optimum point. So, uh, so the pressure plot shows the influence of the uh, respective uh, flat positions and, and, and the flow trajectories, you can look at that. So illustrate the, the overall configuration of the dock system. So showing also different flaps positions. And here's also more post-processing for you uh, as how the flow and streamlines develops uh, in, in this case, so uh, for how how you can basically how the flow is moving, it is colored by the pressure. So where you get areas of high pressure, how how the flow rate would change, and uh, what kind of flow rate you get in each room of uh, out of this uh, these different outlets uh, through through this stock system. And uh, yeah, so this can 
continue and you can uh, view like the overall trajectory of the fluids as it moves through the duct. So that was like the summary of this, um, this optimization study. So the solver, the flow EFD solver exhibits a robust convergence behavior. So one of the issues that people uh, voted on the, on the poll, so it's, it's, it is driven by user-defined goals. So this, this process is seamless and the user can expect like quick and accurate results with minimal manual intervention. And this enables also the design engineer to perform optimization studies by uh, intelligent design explorations. And for additional investigations and extended uh, design exploration can also be run by the SimCenter HEATS module uh, embedded in the SimCenter Flow EFD with the usage of uh, Sherpa optimization method. Now, this requires another presentation on how like uh, this can be coupled in HEATS, but this is also a game changer when it comes to optimization of, of the CFD analysis. And then to summarize, just um, wanted to show you the, the kind of steps that we went through. So it allows you to visualize performance in a way that a physical tests cannot. So the streamlined, intuitive, and, uh, and reliable workflow for, for the shown optimization example is the unique value proposition for, for the SimCenter Flow EFD, which I separate this tool from other competitive offerings. And so in kind of just wrapping up here, I wanted to show uh, some of our customer successes and again, like different application areas. So uh, this is an auto, uh, automotive supplier, Dr. Schneider. Uh, they use HVAC systems within automotive applications, of course. Uh, and you see here the, the statements uh, uh, from, uh, from their engineers and how they, they were able to use this tool to see like the flow pattern to opt optimize their air conditioning systems within their uh, the, the vehicle parts uh, that they supply. So this is another customer, Jazzo. So uh, this is a very interesting study. So they're, they're known for their expertise in, in designing and like marketing protective housing for electricity, gas, and telecommunications and boilers. And their, uh, their housing, so these housing need to permit like maximum airflow and at the same time like fulfill uh, some stringent requirements for fire, rain, snow, and dust, and like uh, their, their intruder, uh, intruder protection. So uh, what they did was that uh, in developing these housing, so minimizing pressure loss was, was their main uh, design challenge. And because they rely on natural ventilation, so the higher the pressure loss, the, the less airflow into the housing. So. Uh, just move ahead a little bit early. So, and uh, as I was saying, so they were able to cut their design time from three weeks to one day using uh, using fully of simulation tools and optimize this uh, their their product. So, again, uh, we can look at another example. So, bronze work. Uh, uh, just going to quickly move over, move over this. Uh, they were producing fans and, and coolers, and uh, and they were also uh, able to. Uh, get like 80% uh, uh, thermal efficiency versus their traditional designs using Flow EFD. So that's kind of the customer successes that you can get from this uh, uh, this tool. Uh, and just wanted to share share these stories. So uh, 